Hey everybody, Jason here again with the GDT Basics video question line. And today's topic is irregular features as datum features. Today's question is can datum A be applied to a hexagon shape? My colleague has identified a hex shape as datum A, but three center planes may not necessarily intersect at the exact same place, creating a datum axis. So we have a couple of conversations to have before we dive into this. Uh, the first being that just because something is datum A doesn't necessarily make it a primary datum. But in this scenario, the drawing that we've created here, we're going to utilize datum feature A as the primary datum feature. And as you can see, we've identified datum feature A as this hexagon shape right here. And so to answer the question uh, quickly is yes, you can identify the primary datum uh, as a hexagon shape, and that will control five degrees of freedom for anything that references that datum feature as a primary datum feature in the feature control frame. Now, the question that gets brought up is, how does this create a datum axis? And while we can picture a perfect hexagon and the midplanes from that hexagon being this midplane, this midplane, or this midplane, all three of them intersect and create the center of the hexagon shape. And theoretically, hexagon shapes will have an axis. But if that hexagon shape in reality is not a perfect hexagon like we see here, the midplanes created from the two outside planes here, or maybe the two outside planes here, or the two outside planes here, don't necessarily always create a datum axis. And so how do we get a datum axis from an irregular datum feature? And just like getting an axis from an irregular cylinder, we still need to utilize that true geometric counterpart to yield our datum axes. In this scenario, though, we get a datum axis and a datum plane from this linear extruded shape. At least that's what the standard calls these sort of irregular features being used as datum features. And as you can see, we're qualifying this datum feature with profile of a surface. So even though we know that the actual surface we're measuring won't be a perfect hexagon, we can guarantee some level of size and form using the profile callout right here. So we're making sure that all of the elements of this surface stay inside that tolerance zone. That's qualifying datum feature A, saying, hey, let's make sure it's a good hexagon shape. But even if it's not perfect, we can still derive a perfect axis and a perfect plane from that datum feature. How we do this is by picturing the datum feature simulator. In this scenario, the true geometric counterpart is a hexagon shape or an envelope, if you imagine that envelope going in and out of the page. So rather than a primary datum feature that's a cylinder and its true geometric counterpart being also a cylinder, we see this one's kind of an irregular true geometric counterpart. And that envelope grows and expands. Now, it's pretty easy to picture a hexagon shape growing and expanding. Uh, out from the center of that shape. But if it's an irregular or really irregular shape, defining how those surfaces have to expand outward uh, can be a process in, defined by itself. So this one's rather easy. We can picture the center of this hexagon shape. And from the center of that true geometric counterpart, we're gonna derive our datums. We're gonna derive the origin uh, that can control translation in two directions and rotation in all three directions. So this feature not only creates a datum axis, but also a midplane that clocks everything around that datum axis. And so we can then locate and orientate all three of these holes with respect to datum A. And we are clocking all three of these holes with respect to each other, as well as with respect to the hexagon shape and the faces that make up that shape. Again, it's always easier for me to picture the actual gauge that might be designed. So if we're designing the gauge that would check this part, the datum feature simulator, since we're not modified at MMB, would have to be a simulator that expands outward and engages the irregular surface of that hexagon shape. And then as soon as it engages fully and it can't expand anymore, we've established our origin for most of our measurements that reference this datum feature as a primary datum feature A. And we can go ahead and see that the pins that would check these, again, those diameters of those pins would be the virtual condition. And so we could easily check all of these holes. Now, this is an expensive gauge to design because the hexagon shape has to expand outward. And just like we would see if we tried to check this digitally with a point cloud on a CMM, we would also need to be able to fit a perfect envelope who expands outward and touches the high points of that point cloud. So just as if this were a cylindrical datum feature, 
we would have to fit a cylinder to that point cloud, ideally max inscribed cylinder to fit to that cylindrical point cloud. However, we have something a little more irregular and a little more advanced, and that does control rotation about the axis and midplane of this hexagon shape. So you might have to get creative to utilize the point cloud of this hexagon shape in order to constrain all five degrees of freedom that it can, and ideally it gets as close to simulating this expanding envelope as possible. Now, one alternative would be to consider the MMB modifier. The MMB modifier allows us to have a single boundary that can simulate datum feature A. And the design criteria is that if we were to put this surface on top of the mating feature, and when those two elements interact, there's a little bit of clearance or a little bit of play. In other words, they can this part can translate loosely away from this part in the final assembly. If that's the case during assembly, we can adjust where these parts are with respect to each other to get these holes to line up, we should allow inspection to do the same. And that's called datum shift. We're allowing inspection to shift the feature away from the datum simulator. And the size of this datum simulator is the MMB of our irregular feature of size. In other words, if we take the size defined by our basic dimensions and understand what the maximum material boundary would be based on our profile tolerance, which really would be three sets of parallel faces spaced apart an inch and a half, and each one of those faces can deviate in and out 30 thousandths, our hexagon shape would be a hexagon whose flats are 1.5 minus 30 thousandths. And that is our true MMB boundary. Now, this is also rather tricky to gauge when you're dealing with a CMM point cloud, but this makes very quick work of an actual fixed functional gauge. We could design this gauge feature and these three gauge features very easily and once again, as we see, if we were to fit this part on the physical simulator, we would see that we would be restraining the rotation about the axis of that hexagon shape. And so we are controlling five degrees of freedom, two translations and three rotations. The one degree of freedom that this hexagon shape cannot control as a primary datum is the translation in and out of the page. Alternatively, if the hexagon feature is not necessarily supposed to control the rotation about its axis, we can consider a couple of other different ways to control this feature as a primary datum. One of them being custom datum reference frames from the ASME Y14.5 2009 section 4.22. Another one we can consider is the application of MMB, LMB, and RMB to irregular features of size. Check out section 4.17 for this one. We cover both of these topics in our advanced course if you're interested to learn more on those. Again, thanks for submitting your question, and I hope this cleared some things up for you, and have a great day. Our goal is to be your best source for gd and information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand gd and on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our gd and community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our gd and and print reading quizzes. Download helpful charts and access articles